My concern and my worries is if Cody gets his way and we buy, then it's gonna delay us and it's the impact it will make on our family and our family culture. It will be irreparable. Kelty and Tony went live on their Patreon page the other day, and maybe you've heard about this. They were on there just answering questions. And well, somebody asked them about Robin and Cody living in Flagstaff. And interestingly, McKelty and Tony made it seem like they're thinking about moving. McKelty and Tony said, he, meaning Cody, he's got this itch. He's been talking about it for a while. Flagstaff is absurdly expensive. He wants something cheaper, much cheaper. Most everyone who talks about sister wives has been talking about this very issue with Mary, Janelle, and Christine, arguably the money makers in that family, with them out on their own. How would Cody and Robin continue to afford that big, beautiful house in Flagstaff? Well, this conversation that McKelty and Tony had online made it, makes it seem like Cody and Robin are asking themselves that same question too. I imagine this is a stressful question for them to try to answer together. If you've been watching Sister Wives for a while, then you might remember that this particular house in Flagstaff, the one that Cody and Robin are allegedly consider selling, this house has been surrounded by chaos and stress and turmoil from the very beginning. And in some ways, I think buying this house, if we wanna look really deep into it, which you know I love to do, <laughs> I think buying this house represented a downward spiral that this family could just never turn around from. In season 14, Robin and Cody got word from their landlord that the house they were renting was gonna be put up for Not sale. that much later, the landlord came back to them and said, well, the house has sold and y'all got 60 days to find a new place to live. And this is when the conflict started. Okay, faced with uh, only 60 days to find their new uh, house, uh, Robin laid out the requirements, what she was looking for. She said she needed more than four bedrooms. She said it needed to be in the same school district. It needed to, you know, preferably not be too much farther away from the other families, the sister wives and their kids. And it needed to be a rental that they could sign a lease for at least two years. They had two months to find this, right? How hard could that be? <laughs> However hard it was, it was made harder by the fact that Cody was not committed to any of those requirements. In my opinion, Cody seemed a little annoyed that Robin had insisted on more than four bedrooms. At one point, he joked with Brianna and Aurora that maybe they could share a room and maybe even at some point, Ariella could join in with them. And from what I could tell, Robin and her girls did not really appreciate it. Mom has rejected every house that we've looked at that has not had five bedrooms. Cody, that's not because the girl's not sharing. Someone's going to have to share with a five bedroom. We really honestly need six. Uh, Cody was also open to changing school districts. And I appreciate this, okay? Cody's consistent. One thing he will do consistently is uproot his kids from their school. <laughs> when he needs something to change. Well, of course, Robin and her girls were not interested in that either. Yeah, it is. I really like this house. What? I really like this house. It's just, you'd have to go to school at a different school. You have to what, he would? Yeah, I no, just, no, 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 just, no, 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 we are not going to a different school. We're not going to a different school. We're not going to a different school. Cody's freaking my girl. But maybe the biggest point of tension between Robin and Cody was that Robin wanted to rent a house. Cody wanted to buy a house. We're we're having a really hard time trying to find a rental. I don't know what to do. We're not point. finding a rental. I'm sorry. We're going to make an offer on a house. We're going to buy a house. Mom doesn't okay. like it, and I haven't talked her into well, we it yet. We don't have to do that. We can still. We have a little bit of time to keep looking for a rental. As Cody and Robin went back and forth about all these points of disagreement. Uh, they were doing this in front of their kids, and this is the moment when Aurora kind of famously had her her panic attack and had to be carried up the stairs. Um, at that point, then Cody and Robin agreed that they were not really going to argue about this stuff in front of the kids anymore, but the tension was still there. And maybe most importantly, time was still ticking. They started with 60 days, 
and they were going to waste as many of those days as they could. That's how it seemed. Throughout this series of episodes, uh, Robin talked a lot about her faith. And I don't remember her doing that so openly, so consistently, so frequently in many other episodes or seasons. Like, I'm still looking every day. I keep waiting for God to give us another miracle. He gave us this house, enough to get me here, and he'll do it again. Robin was sure that God would take care of them by providing them with a rental with more than four bedrooms with a two-year lease in the same school district. I don't know. Okay, well... um. Cody wasn't convinced that that's what was going to happen. He was pretty certain there was no rental available. And maybe God is sending us the message that we need to buy a house. Maybe he's providing the house he wants us to buy because there's other good things that happens even if we buy the house, even when we build out on the property. This doesn't make sense to me. Why would he delay us going out to the property? Um, the best thing you can do when you have to find a new house with very uh, tight requirements, very specific requirements on a really short timeline is take a trip out of town. <laughs> so that's what Robin did. <laughs> Actually, all of the sister wives, uh, the four of them traveled to Chicago to see Mary's child, Leon, and Leon's partner, Audrey. And actually, it's fun. I like Chicago. They had seemed to have a fun time there. Um Interestingly, Robin kind of started talking about the stress that she was having uh, with Cody and trying to find this new place to live. This has been such a treat, not just to get to come to Chicago and to see the girls and everything, but to see them so happy. Yeah, I'm sorry that I've been such a... It's okay. I feel like I've been like in my own head and haven't been having very much fun. I'm sorry for being a party pooper. You have not been a party pooper. I don't, I don't, I don't think really. I don't feel like that. that. Okay. I thought you were definitely being a party <laughs> pooper. You were just soft and no, going just... and laugh. Even uh, Janelle said, you know, things must be pretty bad for Robin to talk openly about this because Robin does not usually share, you know, whatever problems her and Cody are having with the rest of us. In an interview with producers, Cody admitted that he could have been a stinker and just bought a house while Robin was in Chicago, but he didn't want to do that because he wanted to respect Robin and he was invested in her dream coming true. Isn't that nice? Robin said she wanted to build on Coyote Pass for the good of the family and I think that's good. But if we like look at this a little more deeply, I guess we see that she wasn't actually willing to compromise on the things that she actually had control over. Robin was insistent that God would just miraculously place the perfect rental on the rental market in the time frame that she needed it to appear. But Robin, beyond just praying, she couldn't really do anything to control what house would be on the market. But what she could control is what she was willing to deal with. Cody told us that he had showed Robin several four bedroom homes which that's pretty nice. Four bedrooms is nice. But she said no to all of them. She wanted more than four bedrooms. She wanted a two-year lease. She wanted that same school district. And it seemed like she was not willing to budge on any of that. And meanwhile, time was still passing them by. Well, to make a long story a little bit shorter, you, I mean, you already know, Cody is Robin's best customer. So eventually she relented. <laughs> and she said, Okay. On um, if we do have to, I know we've got to offer because we need enough time. If we don't have, if this is our only option is to buy, but could we make the earnest money not very much so that if they had less than thirty days at this point, okay. Let's put an offer on this house. But first, can we ask the seller if we can rent the house? And if we can't rent it, then can we commit to the least amount of earnest money so that if a rental home just amazingly shows up on the market within the next week, we can walk away from buying this house without losing too much money? Cody agreed to that. And that's what they did. When they moved into the house, it seemed to be done with some mixed emotion. I've never done this, but I imagine really when people move into like a five bedroom, 
four bathroom home. The breathtaking views of mountains and forests. <laughs> Aren't they happy? <laughs> to me, when they walked in, they all looked, a most of them looked a little unsure of how they should be reacting to this purchase. Long week of moving and we're just dragging the kids in with suitcases. Oh, what do you guys think? Kind of reminds me of like in the country during like the winter. For a long time, everybody knew that Robin was the favorite wife and that her kids were the favorite kids. For whatever reason, the other wives went along with it. I think they were getting what they needed more or less. Obviously not everything that you would want from a functioning marriage, but it was enough for them. But earlier in season 14, we saw Cody tell Mary that there was no family money available to invest in her dream of owning that bed and breakfast in Utah. Then in season 16, we saw Cody tell Christine that there was no way her dream of moving back to Utah was going to happen. And in season 17, we saw Cody tell Janelle that there was no way her dream of building on Coyote Pass as quickly as she wanted to was going to happen. But at that point, they all knew that Robin's dream, living in Flagstaff, five bedroom home, ideal school district, there was money for that. It was their money, but it was for her. Yes, of course, her dream included renting, but the fact that she was not willing to be flexible in any of her other requirements makes me skeptical that renting was really the priority. And it was really those other things that mattered to her. Robin, I think, had, in some ways, had the good sense to walk into that house and not scream and holler and say how beautiful it is. And oh my gosh, I can't believe I own this place. If you just think back to the house she moved from, when the show first started. Anyway, it's almost like she didn't have to do all that because she had the house. And I think buying that house really established her kind of as like the queen of the family. At the very least, it established that Robin's dreams were the priority. Her dreams were gonna come true and the rest of y'all, y'all yeah, gotta figure that out by yourselves. Have you ever heard the saying, I know you have, how you got them is how you lose them. <laughs> Typically that's about, right, a romantic relationship, but could it be about a house too? From my perspective, Cody and Robin buying this house was filled with chaos from the beginning. First of all, they couldn't agree on it. Robin went along with it, even though she knew it was wrong. And it represented the fact that Robin's experience was the most important one. And the rest of y'all, Mary, Janelle, Christine, you all are on your own. Please take care of yourselves because Cody will not be here for you. And it just seems like a full circle moment. The rest of them said, okay, you want us to take care of ourselves? Well, we're going to do it. Gosh darn it, we're going to do it. <laughs> and they went and left. They took their money with them. And now Robin and Cody, you're in a position to not, allegedly, okay, you're in, allegedly in a position where you can't keep that house. It does seem kind of like the universe sending a message. <laughs> how you get them is how you lose them. You took advantage of those ladies, allegedly. You took advantage of those ladies and their income and their investment in the family working together and it all fell apart. So I don't know, we'll see, I guess. Will this show up in season 18? Will they be looking for a new house, a more modest house? Honestly, at this point in their lives, Robin and Cody have five kids, right? Three of them are over 18. They don't need five bedrooms anymore. <laughs> let me know what you think, all right? In the meantime, let me know. Does this, did the buying this house represent a turning point that was just like, that was the deal breaker? That was the straw on the camel's back? Cody had for years taken care of and prioritized Robin over everyone else. But I mean, buying a almost million dollar home, that sends a very clear message, doesn't it? Anyway, yes, let me know what you think. And I'll either see you in the comments or I'll see you in the next video uh, because there's like always so much to talk about when it comes to this Brown family. And I also want to talk about a thousand pound sisters and thousand pound best friends. I know not as many people watch that show or those shows, but um, they're good. <laughs> we gotta talk about them. And 90 Day Fiance the other way. There's so much going on. Oh my gosh, <laughs> we have a lot to talk about. Anyway, thanks for being here and we will talk soon. All right, take care, bye.